What's going on, my peeps? Uh, actually, I have no idea why I went into an Italian mode right there. What's going on? Uh, but how's it going with you folks? Welcome to virtual class for our Algebra 2. And we are doing this on the day after or the weekend after the hurricane. I hope that it wasn't too nuts for you. I don't mean to be sarcastic about that. I'm actually serious about hurricanes and whatnot. I told my kids, you really got to take these things seriously uh, because hurricanes are no like no small thing. Are you guys all right? Is everyone all right? Does anyone live on the big island? Just making sure. Just want to know. Travis lives on the big island. Was it nuts? Was it like cra crazy? Your friend's roof blew off. That's crazy. Does anyone happen to live in Pune district? Because then we got a little election thing going on over there. And I know you guys aren't old enough to vote or anything, but I think it's going to be kind of interesting. I want to see what happens in that district for the next couple of days. Anyway, let's get this party started. Why don't we just start working on this stuff right now? Um, I'm looking at... See, it's, it's kind of hard to tell what, which where we're at on exactly, but I think this is where we're at right here. And we're talking about linear functions. So we talk, I've been talking about functions. And um, what we want to talk about right now is the slope. The slope of a line. The slope is actually, um, let's write it up over here, slope. The slope is defined as, do you guys, how do you define the slope as? What do you, what do you guys think when you see slope? I think of two words that begin with an R and a fraction. Rise over run, exactly. Rise over run. Now this is actually an important concept. It means how far up you go divided by how far across you go. For example, if we're going to be making some stairs, we would actually have a certain code that we would follow that we would have to make these stairs at. And it would tell us how big of an angle those stairs are going. So we can kind of like put a little markers over here and then we would just kind of like connect those lines and that would be our slope. Now if it were a lot of rise and a very little run that would look like this. A lot of rise, a little run, a lot of rise, a little run, a lot of rise. That kind of stuff actually that's not a consistent stairs. Then your slope would actually be very angled like that because there's a lot of rise and a little run. And I'll admit to you that because I am fat that would be a very hard stairs for me to climb because that means I would have to lift my leg up very high and I would kind of have to balance on this small little ledge right here. I used to be able to do it when I was a rock climber, but now I've gained 60 pounds since I got married, so what are you going to do? But actually, this doesn't meet uh, specifications for how you would be, what would you would have to do. Um, you can also have a very low slope, or I guess if you were actually building something they could call that a grade and you could have a low grade steps where it would be a little rise big run little rise big run little rise big run so you connect those dots and that would be a line and I described the slope the, the high slope as something that is very angled well this one is kind of slightly angled does that make sense to you yes no got it okay all right now we could have gone through and defined the slope as the run divided by the rise. We could have said, okay, well your slope is actually a measurement of the run divided by the rise. And that would have actually worked out perfect if we told everyone in the world to change the system to be that way. So my question to you is why did we choose rise over run? Why did we choose it to be rise over run as opposed to run over rise? If you don't know, say IDK, but I want you to chime in. I want to hear from you. Remember, we're developing a little culture where we're talking back and forth. So, IDK from Kaylin. What about you, Travis? IDK. All right, IDK. All right, you want to know my answer? My answer is IDK. I have no idea why they chose Rise Over Run, but they did. It's now a convention. So, people, from now on, rise over run is the convention for slope. I guess it kind of makes sense because if you think of something that is angled up very steep uphill, you would think, okay, that's great, I've got a bigger slope. 
But we could have gone through the whole world and, and said, hey, world, instead of calling it Rise of a Run, we're going to call it Run of a Rise. And as long as the world st sits with that, then we're cool. Then we, then we can start building our buildings and everything would be fine. But if you think about it, like, or if I taught you that Run of a Rise is equal to slope, that would work for our class until we start passing on our, our, our um, like construction things over to different builders and they'll build it and then they'll build like a backward system. And so anyway, it's rise over run. And that's kind of the key to this whole line business. Got it? So there's a few equations about lines. Do you guys remember any of the equations about lines that you're supposed to? I'm going to erase this. What are the equations you know about lines? There's one that starts with a Y. So this Y equals MX plus B. Do you remember that one? Yes, no, help me out here. All right, what about M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1? Have you seen that one? Yeah? All right, all right. Um, what, and this is called the slope formula. This is called the slope intercept form. This one right here is called the... Uh, I think it's called the point slope form. It goes like this. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Have you seen that one before? I'm pretty sure that's the correct way of writing it. Yes. Now, you got a bunch of different equations. And when we taught this to you originally, we taught this to you as three separate equations. But really... It comes down to one concept. You can you can kind of nix this whole thing and just keep in mind that slope equals rise over run. I'll prove it to you. I'll show it to you. You guys ready? It's it's actually a really cool concept. And this is me showing you all of the you know I mean all of these equations. And all you got to do is understand that slope equals rise over run. Are we cool? You guys want to see it? Or are you guys like nah? I'd rather just memorize equations. Don't show it to me. What do you want from me, folks? Yes, I want to see it. No, I don't want to see it. I need you to talk to me. It's a back and forth conversation here. Are you gonna, I, I'm doing all the talking. All you got to do is write yes and no. There we go. Thank you, Alicia, for, for you know, I mean, making sure that I'm not here by myself. All right, ready? The way I kind of think about this is I think this. If you have a graph, now draw this graph on a piece of paper, okay? Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. And we're going to go with two points. There's two points on this graph, and they're random points. They're not like actual, like, 1, 2, which would graph at here. 